a warm welcome this is control systems course is lecture 3.4 focusing on determination of closed loop response from open loop response for determining the closed loop response from open loop response we are going to use two different circles namely m circles and n circles with m circles representing the magnitude of the closed loop transfer function and the n circles representing the phase angle of the closed loop transfer function we know the peak magnitude mr value is nothing but the uh, calculation in decibels that is 20 log of the closed loop transfer function let us consider the closed loop transfer function to be m of j omega is equal to g of j omega by 1 plus g of j omega and here the h of j omega that is the feedback is considered to be unity let us take g of j omega is equal to x plus j y while substituting this we get m of j omega to be x plus j y divided by 1 plus x plus j y now let us consider the magnitude and the phase angle term we know when a complex term is considered real part plus imaginary part then obviously while taking the magnitude we take the square root of the square of real part plus square of imaginary part and the angle value will be considered to be the tan inverse value of a imaginary part by real part in such a way the magnitude and angle of the numerator part as well as the denominator part are considered while separating the magnitude and angle we have the magnitude part to be a division and the angle in terms of uh, the subtraction that is the numerator part minus the denominator part now in order to draw the m circles let us consider the m value that is the magnitude value alone squaring on both the sides and cross multiplying we get uh, an x square term a y square term and finally an x term on the left hand side and to the right we have m square divided by 1 minus m square now we have to frame the equation in terms of a circle equation only then we can draw m circles so while we are seeing there is x square term there is x term and we are in need of a constant a constant term in that case uh, uh, so that we can frame the equation as a minus b the whole square here while you are considering the third term on the left hand side it is minus 2 m square by 1 minus m square into x so the minus 2 ab term the b is represented as m square minus 1 uh, m square by 1 minus m square so what we are going to do is we are going to take the square of the that term and add it on the left hand side as well as to the right hand side now we will have the equation defined as x minus m square divided by 1 minus m square the whole square that is a minus b the whole square plus y square is equal to we have a term there now this is a perfect circle equation with the center at m square by 1 minus m square comma 0 and radius of m by 1 minus m square thus by substituting the value of m to be 1 we are getting a straight line here the straight line is obtained for the value of m to be 1 and on right hand side as well as the left hand side we can see certain circles of different radiuses this is simple the thing is when m value is substituted to be 1 we are getting an infinite path line because the x value will be infinite while the y value will be equal to 0 in that case your m value will be very larger so it represents a straight line now for m to be less than 1 we have the right hand side circles uh, and we can see that uh, it is 0.33 0.5 0.67 0.6 uh, 766 0.833 so for increasing m value still 1 we have circles similarly on the left hand side of m is equal to 1 we have increased value of m 1 it is a uh, 3 2 1.5 1.3 1.2 1 so the automatically for various m values for which it is greater than 1 we are having circles this is how the closed loop response can be obtained from the open loop response that is we have taken g of j omega is equal to x plus j y that is our open loop 
transfer function. From that, we have framed the closed loop transfer function and we have represented that in circle form. From this circle, we can obtain how the response is. Similarly, next for n circles, it is nothing but the angle value. We have taken that as alpha. Then we have taken the tangent on both the sides and we have considered tan alpha to be equal to capital N. Here we have a term of tan A minus B. Substituting those values, we get N is equal to Y divided by X square plus X plus Y square. On cross multiplying and then taking up all the squared terms, etc, etc, we have x plus 1 by 2 the whole square plus y minus 1 by 2n the whole square which is equal to 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2n the whole square. So, we are framing the circle equation again and this is a family of circles with center at minus 1 by 2 comma 1 by 2n and radius square root of 1 by 4 plus 1 by 2n the whole square. For this, we are going to draw the n circles now. For n is equal to the value we can see it is perfectly when it is at 0 degrees, it is a straight line. That is the real part is 0. Now we can see with increased angle, that is when the angle is positive, we have circles going beyond the positive imaginary axis. And if it is a negative one, then it is at the bottom. I mean, it is, a, uh, it is represented in the negative imaginary axis. So, in this way, we can represent the magnitude circles as m circles and the angular circles as n circles in the polar coordinate form. And thus, the closed loop response is obtained from the open loop response. Thank you.